All right, hello again, guys, and welcome back to the GPWS, where we have the West Clock Sphinx Saga is ongoing. If you haven't seen the last two parts of this series, please do, you're, or else you're going to have absolutely no idea what's going on. So we're going to keep following Jim's PDF here. So what's the next step? So if we look at that picture that Jim sent us, we can see one of his clocks that he's got that has never been disassembled. It's probably never even been used. He has a huge new old stock collection of clocks like this and that which you're looking at is off of a west clock uh greenwich i believe literally the same exact design and you can see that at the um at the 12 o'clock position and the six o'clock position you can see that the brass is kind of um i guess molded around the arbor there and what jim kind of wants us to do is he wants us to put this this wheel here on a steel anvil which we don't have so we're gonna use a piece of <laughs> we're gonna use the next best thing just a piece of scrap steel and we're gonna we're actually gonna hammer a uh, stake into this but we're gonna do it in such a way to press uh this side and this side and yeah he's it doesn't matter which side you do um it's just this thing is is uh is hammered in on two different sides it doesn't matter which way that goes on you can see kind of more what he's talking about when you read the PDF that he sent me. So, yeah, that's kind of what we're going to do next. We're going to use this, this uh, scrap steel or anvil. So, let's get started. I'm going to pick two places. I think I'm just going to go here and here. I probably can't go wrong, as he says. Um, I doubt West Clock is being too too specific with that. Um, if, they, if they really cared, you'd think that they would mark that out better. Also, if I look at this gear, it doesn't look anything like his. Um, I'm not sure if that's because it's been pulled off of its shaft or or what exactly that's all about. I, if I look at any of these wheels that I've got, I don't think any of them have that on there. This one's filed, so of course we can't tell. I'm not going to use that one. I don't know. It'll be a parts one, I guess. I've got one more. Let's see. I can't really tell. That one you kind of can. Hmm... Okay, well, we're going to just try it anyway, see what the heck happens. I'm also going to make sure these guys are bent out before we do anything. There we go. Just stick my screwdriver in there. Through the top. There we go. That's kind. Of, that's more like it. Uh, we'll try that. And... Uh, yeah, I'm just going to pick two spots. I'm actually going to grab a Sharpie and mark them out. I think I already kind of know where I want to go here. Um, I think over here and probably over there. That looks good. And this it says use a pointed stake. So if I look at all my stakes, all these brand new stakes here, what looks the most pointed? I think this one. I think number, number uh, what is that? It's 41. Number 41 looks pretty good. Uh... Oh, that one's really sharp, although I don't know if I want to... Hmm, that might be too much. I don't, I don't know. We'll, we'll try... We'll actually try number 40... Uh, what is that? 42? I'll just show you what the number is on that. I don't know if you can even... If that makes any difference at all. Come on. Focus. 275.42. So I don't know what that means. If that's like a... If that's some kind of manufacturing code. I don't know what that would be all about. And he says about one millimeter from the center of the gear. Oh, shoot. How am I going to hold this thing? Uh, I guess I just put a glove on and just hold it. I'm not sure how exactly. As you can see, this is the most planned out uh, video you've ever, you've ever seen here. Uh, okay, I think that looks good. Uh, we're gonna just going to... Oh, shoot. Maybe it doesn't. I need both hands. Uh, how am I going to do this? I guess I can just try it like this. Oh my gosh, I'm completely missing. This is not going to work. Oh, yikes. Okay, I might have to just... Did that do anything? I don't know if it did. <laughs> oh, yo, yo, I might not be able to film this. I don't know. Well, we did actually, no, it did do something. We mashed that in just a little bit. He didn't say come in from an angle and do it. So maybe that's all you have to do. I don't know. 
that do anything? I'm not, I'm not trying su too super hard here. Also, the back of my stake doesn't seem to mind being hammered with a just a regular hammer. So that's something I might do a little bit more. As everybody keeps telling me, I need mechanical tension here. So I think that definitely changed the shape of that hole by doing that. I'm going to angle it a little bit. definitely doing something I could make this focused here for a change how about that hmm yeah you definitely want to get as close to that edge as you can and try and just do it a little bit more do it a little bit more there let's see if that actually does anything I have no idea if it will or not absolutely no idea smaller there we go okay we'll try that we're gonna see what happens there hi i this is totally experimentation hour so yeah we're just seeing what the heck happens right, and now for probably the most the final and most chaotic step getting the wheel back on this shaft this may take several tries we have no idea what's going to happen here also as a as a kind of cautionary measure i brought back the piece of aluminum you can see all these little holes in this aluminum where things have been hammered into it uh, that would be just different shafts that I've just hammered on. Aluminum is softer than steel, so I don't want to wreck the end of this. So I'm just going to line it up on the steel shaft, or sorry, on the steel, or what the heck am I saying? On the piece of aluminum, put this little, this guy back on. That's just so these tabs don't dig into the steel there. So we're going to stick that on there again. Line it up. Uh, I think we're going to line up, this thing is in, is in like an oval shape, right? So we're just going to get our oval here, take this, line up the points that we did with the oval, and then we're going to take a pointed, ooh, it already, it's already kind of feeling tight on there, that's good. Uh, we're going to take our, we're going to take a stake without, which, which has a nice big hole in it, and we're just going to stick it on there. You need three hands for this job, but... <laughs> But we're not going to have three hands here because I'm a human. And we're going to hammer it on. Here we go. Gee whiz, that didn't work at all. Okay. Uh, this That's the basic idea of it anyway. Uh, let's see here if I can get that to work. I don't think I can film this, you guys. I, I think this is just too chaotic. This is I'm really balancing it on this piece of aluminum, so... Yeah, I don't think this is going to work the way uh, the way we'd all like it to. We've got the right idea for sure. This is definitely on there now, but uh, we've got absolutely no tension whatsoever. That's not good at all. So we're going to... Um, or wait, would it not have tension at this stage in the game? Uh, no, I'm pretty sure it's supposed to. Maybe I should get a screwdriver in there and bend those tabs out some more. Maybe that's kind of what I'm looking for. Maybe all the hammering and all the banging like made all these tabs go all go all tiny on me. What the heck? Okay. Yeah, no, it's definitely on there though. Um not on there like it's supposed to be, but definitely on there. So we've got the right idea, at least. Uh huh. I'm just wondering how Yeah, this this is supposed to be somewhat tight. <laughs> so I'm just wondering if I'm if I'm if I've done this right at all or not. Oh. I'll be back, guys. I the, I can't even film it. Okay, so I'm back. Progress has been made. Um, I've been using the same exact tools you've seen before. The knob is just loosely slapped on there. I've got this piece of wood here, and what I was doing was I was having the movement kind of over here, having this down on the uh, piece of aluminum, and just taking the stake and hammering it on like so and it seems we've got it's not I, I don't know it's on the it's kind of on the point of man it might be just enough tension to oh it might not be enough tension you know I could hammer it on some more but I'm also wondering if uh, since I've kind of got it where I want it I'm debating putting just a little bit more like epoxy or something just over that 
just to freeze that on and it would, the, the epoxy would be only like right here just to freeze that on and make sure it doesn't come off because when it's you know th i mean it's got mechanical tension here already the brass is formed around it so it doesn't look like it's going to pop off but uh yeah i'm just playing with it a lot uh, it has loosened up just a little bit through me just messing around with it but uh yeah, I'm not sure. This thing, hmm. I'm not quite sure that's going to be enough tension for us. I think I might have to hammer that on a little, just a little bit more. Oh, come on. That knob isn't on there hard, so it should just pop off or it won't. <laughs> oh, yeah. The great knob removal of 2023. That is actually one of the best knob removals, though of the year so far but yeah i don't know if that is gonna do it it's pretty darn close though and as you can see this is sticking through this uh that um that shaft is sticking through this wheel so it's more than it originally was i don't think i'll be ever, i don't know if i'll ever be able to get it back to the original kind of state that this was in back in 1953 where this was completely flush with that piece of brass. I don't know if it'll ever go back to that. If I just hammer this on, yeah, that's all I'm going to do there. So the tension increases tenfold. That's awesome. So I'm wondering if it can be held at that position with epoxy. You know, I'm not quite sure yet, but you know, we're getting pretty darn close here, kids. So, closer than I've ever been before, I'll tell you that much. Um, it's interesting how staking sets... I'm just going to back up here and just talk about staking sets for a second. It's interesting how these tools basically fall under the radar of just tools in general. I mean, with just screwing around with this stuff alone, I can see probably like a thousand different uses for something like this in all kinds of workshops anywhere ever. I don't know why staking sets are not sold in hardware stores, at least not over here. Um, they seem incredibly useful, especially for, you know, stuff like this or whatever. Um, I don't know, if a tap and die set exists, you'd think a staking set would be, you know, kind of a, a second kind of tool, secondary tool for that, if that makes any sense. So... Yeah, I don't know why staking sets are not more popular than they are. But, uh, like, really? You, this only is useful in watchmaking and nowhere else? Really? I don't believe that. Um, they're literally just punches. Just a set of really... Uh, you get a vast uh, variety of punches here. All kinds of different shapes and sizes. And you can use them for all kinds of crazy tasks. And I probably will use them for all kinds of crazy tasks. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, if, if tap and die sets exist and if just regular punches, which honestly are literally just the brother to this, I mean, the staking set, some of these punches have holes in them, but this is literally just a standard punch right here. Like I could, they, they sell these things at hardware stores. If that all exists, why in the world are there not, you know, assortments like this available? That's just my two cents on that. Also, I can't review this yet because... I haven't done all kinds of crazy jobs. I mean, this is the first time I've ever used this thing. This piece of steel we don't need. This is the first time I've used this. And, uh, yeah, I, I think it's I think it's fine. But that's not a comprehensive review of every single one on here. Also, these are standing, these are standing up perfectly fine to a standard hammer here. This is not, there's no frills about this. This isn't even, what, what brand is this? Job mate, you know. <laughs> It's not even it's not even a, a real tool brand. I, I don't think Jobmate really exists. It's just kind of one of those names uh, that you, you know, a, a hardware store. Uh, I, I'm not going to get into it, but I think you guys know what I'm talking about. I, I'm not I'm not going into a store looking for Jobmate tools, if that makes any sense. This hammer is great, though. I like it. But uh, yeah, no, there's no it's just a really basic Chinese hammer, and I don't think there's really much to say about it. But yeah, this is going, cool. yeah. It, so, anyway, my, the, the staking set has provided us with this tension. That'll definitely hold. 
I'm just wondering, as I said, about some putting some epoxy on that. And I know I seem to be obsessed with epoxy. It's not proper clock or watchmaking kit, I know. But uh, I think it might just do the job here. I don't know. I don't want, I don't want to ruin it, though. I don't want to don't want to make a mistake in that in that sense. Um, granted, I did put epoxy over here, but that didn't that didn't work at all. <laughs> I don't think it had enough to grip on. This has something to work with here, so I might do it. I might not. I don't know. I don't know if this will hold. It looks like it will, but, you know, I don't want to be halfway through putting this thing together and suddenly this just pops apart for no reason or the tension just completely just disappears into the, into the void. So, yeah, no, that's, that's great tension though right there. I'm using my fingernail to turn that gear. You can definitely tell that's nice and tight. So that is not going to have any trouble uh, with this finger losing tension and just going all over this alarm uh, cam here, the alarm trip wheel. This spring, I have no idea if that's okay or not, but we're not going to worry about that right now. We're just going to worry about numeral uno there and see where the heck this goes. Um, I think I might end the video here. I'm not sure what exactly I'm going to do yet. I kind of need to think this over before I do anything else. Because I don't want to, you know, put epoxy on that. And who knows, it might even lose tension. It has before, but it the epoxy didn't have a huge kind of knob on top to work with before. Now it does. Before, the epoxy had to go and seep into this brass bushing here but now you know now there's no now there's none of that going on here this is just this is sticking out and i feel like it would be able to hold it if uh, if it was applied there but i don't know for sure maybe there's some other thing i can use i don't know i don't but the point is this wheel never has to come off again um this is kind of this is kind of the equivalent of riveting to some extent to some extent i guess if you have a staking set you can do stuff like this um, honestly, if you had some punches, you could probably do stuff like this. I probably didn't even have to get a staking set, but, but, uh, for replacing balance staffs or whatever, because there will probably come a time when I want to do that. This is a definitely a must have. So anyway, well, we're going to see what I'm going to do here. I'm not sure yet. And, uh, yeah, I will see you guys in the next episode of the GPWS and we'll see where we go from here. Oh yes, and thank you, Jim, for the great advice, because I would have never gotten to this point even without, without your help, so thank you very much.